I'm open to anything that's willing to enhance my performance. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, from, fuck, man, I've I've been to Costa Rica and done ayahuasca, right. dabbling in kind of a little bit of everything. Yeah, man. Um, How was that? It was great. It's a I, lot. I remember I hit you up right after. Yeah. I was like, because I, I had a good friend in the military, and he's working with a lot of military charity events that are helping guys with PTSD and all that mm-hmm. stuff to use the... Um, and I don't think it was the same stuff. Cause uh, it was like, typically, PTSD stuff seems to be like um, Ibogaine yep. is what they're using. Yep. Uh, I don't have any experience with that one, but I'm interested. Like right. I know Chris Bell, uh, Mark Bell's younger brother, who did mm-hmm. the documentary uh, Bigger, Stronger, Faster, Trophy yep. Kids, etc., um, and then has put out one called Ibogaines. Okay. And um, he had double hip replacement early just due to like a genetic issue. Okay. And he said it changed pain for him 100%. Wow. As well as the addiction issues that he had suffered from. For well, that's years. what it's used yep. for, right? It's used to get people off heroin. And it has like a 70% success rate. That's crazy. Like like in a weekend. But we can't. We in can't. a fucking weekend we pull this off? Like, But we can't. But it's not legal here in the United States. <sighs> what a fucking bummer, dude. So crazy. What a crock of shit. <clears throat> that, it's really insane. Can, can we just start with agreeing, do we want to help people or not? Right. And, and they, that Especially was a big one. Who, people who want help. Right. And that, so that was a big change for me with cannabis. Um, like, I grew up with the say no to drugs and everything propaganda. And, like, I didn't smoke in college because we were drug tested as fucking athletes. Right. Like, so no way was I going to have to explain to my parents I lost my scholarship because I got high. <laughs> like, this seemed <laughs> right. like a very easy stress that I could avoid. So <laughs> yeah. I did. Um, yep. And even, like, by then, like, I don't understand, like, how long is this near system? Forever, as far as I fucking know. Exactly. I'm not that smart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just terrified. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, once I kind of got, you know, more an adult, and, and by that point, like, I mean, I'm still working in petrochemical industry, so I can't smoke. Um, we're drug tested relatively regular with, with that job. Um, but when that went away, and then I was still dealing with a lot of pain, like, man, I'll, I'll fucking try anything. So it just started with, I would get, I didn't want to smoke. You know, I got a vape pen and I was like, oh, this is, this is interesting. And then I uh, started smoking more and have, you know, since just become, I mean, relatively a pothead. I guess I, I smoke every day. Um, How'd you sleep with that? Great. Really? It's fucking fantastic. Because everything I've read on sleep doctors is the fact that it actually, it's uh, one of the side effects of marijuana is insomnia. Not for me. That's great. Um, Do um, I think... If I was 100% pain-free, do I think that the sleep's as good as that? Mm-hmm. No. Right. But I'm never 100% pain-free. Fact. So I'm going to take something. <laughs> right. <laughs> like I whether think, that's a fucking hot bath. I think that's better or, than <laughs> the alternatives out there. Right, right. So this is giving me the best quality sleep I can currently get. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, that that's helped me a lot. It's helped me also kind of uh, even mentally with you know being able to i'm fucking add like crazy so being able to uh focus in on things and then turn a bit of the volume down on all the shit around me that i don't care about Mm. it helps with that um so i found it really valuable and it's also what's kept me off of opiates right um because look most days i'm at a i'm at a one to three or or just uncomfortable you know what i mean like i'm not pain anymore like my knee was but now with the hip, like, it's just uncomfortable and it's annoying. Mm-hmm. Pot makes me not care. Right. And so, you know, I'll smoke in the evening and try to get high. But, like, if I'm going to smoke at all during the day, like, it's a hit. And I'm good for the next hour and a half. And I'm still very cognizant. I can hold conversation. I can do all these things. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and once that clicked for me, it was this kind of feeling of, like, like, what the fuck were you protecting me from? Right. <laughs> like, this this is what legally had to be done to protect me from this? Yeah. This thing that's a benefit? That that, that isn't addictive? I think it, be, I think it can be psychologically addictive. I, everything. Everything can, everything can everything right? Can. Um, and then that has stemmed into everything else. I'm like, yo, if you lied to me about this, what else, what else have you lied to me about and I'm interested to know? It is interesting. So, <clears throat> so, yeah, that kind of stuff is when things like that come out, right? When you, when things change and all of a sudden now drastically, like look at me, how many places marijuana is legal? Yep. And I'm a, I actually I don't smoke marijuana. I never, you know, I did in college a little bit. You yeah. Know, I, you know, but never like 
I was never like a, oh, I'm a pothead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I thing at a party. Yeah, exactly. You know, here and there, kind of just to try it. And um, I hated it to be honest. I okay. hated, I hated the way I felt. I hated the way like my brain thought when mm. I was on it. I I just thought it was really stupid. When See, I, I like on. it because it turns off the laser lights. Yeah. Like I can just sometimes at night, especially here, uh, I don't want to think. Yeah. I just want to stare at that fucking thing and then I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just it, it, I didn't like the way it made me feel. So I, I've I mean, never... I'm also not responsible for two humans that live in my house. Right. You know right, what I mean? Like exactly. And you know, it's just not for me. It just never was something, and I never got into it. And but exactly, if it's if it's something that's going to help someone get out of pain, because I've been in pain, like the, you know. Maybe not to the extent with your knee, but... Dude, but like, that doesn't... Dude, I get messages like that, and I bet you do too. Yeah. And it's this, well, I'm having issues, but like, I'm, I'm not in pain like you were. Right. And I'm like, yo, but that doesn't make your shit not hurt. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Stop pain, comparison. Pain is pain, man. Yo, yeah, comparison's a thief of joy. Yeah, it really is. And so, what it do you is. want, Ollie? Big what's, loud what, cat. What's up, kitty cat? Um, <laughs> it's fucking loud as shit, cat. Oh. Um, and then, you know, from that, like with... Starting to experiment with anything else, like um, with, with psychedelics, with mushrooms or, or anything else, have, have been great. Oh, hi there. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, and, and exactly the same thing. If it's going to help someone get off heroin, Yo. get out of it. Like, well, and let's just be clear. The opiate epidemic is heroin. <laughs> right. So, exactly. so we have a problem with heroin and legal heroin. <laughs> right. So now it's, there's, ah, man, it's, just, it's, it's frustrating to say the least when I, you see military guys, right? We're coming back from, you know, we've been at war for 20 years. Close to. Uh, you know, so it's like, gosh, like if this is going to help these guys. And, Dude, and why wouldn't we have everything available? And my buddy's my buddy's saying the things that he's seeing the the people he's seeing that it helps are the you know people you would never even think right yeah. because we all put this we all put some sort of a front on in certain instances and so you don't even know you don't know what the struggles these people are having and when we have a we see something that there's they're seeing solutions for but pharmaceuticals can't don't know how to make money off of it yet. Man, that that's the kind of stuff you're like. It's a bummer. It is. It's a huge bummer. It's a, it's 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 fucking criminal. <laughs> it, it's criminal to me, man. That the idea that like even so recently, like I mean, big doses of mushrooms are are it's are one thing. Right. It is a whole wild bit. LSD the same way. Um, ayahuasca. I you know ibogaine or or iboga or any of these other type of big psychedelics. Um, Microdosing, however, uh, like LSD or psilocybin. <laughs> what are you doing, Ollie? Just beat him. Just, just touch, give him a launch. Just, just t- <laughs> I'm going to touch his face and the tail. No, this is a place for me to be right now. Um, <laughs> for those with the microdosing, like for the way that I was interested in, that it got explained to me was, you know, the, the neuro pathways within our brain get get set in. Like, this is how I problem solve, or even emotionally. So, like, presented with a problem, I react with no and anger first, and then I'll come back to it. Like, you know, if there's a stress, it's always defense first. Right. And, you know, realizing those patterns that you have, um, imagine the neuro pathways in your brain being cut in the way, like, ski tracks on a ski slope. And so people follow the ski tracks because it's path of least resistance. It's what we do. Um the microdosing is like laying down fresh powder. Okay. And so you can start picking different ways. Mm-hmm. And they're easier to pick. Your brain will just allow you to look at a thing and go, oh, okay. Instead of what the normal emotional response would have been. Right. Um, now, you've got to decide that that's the pathway you'd like things to continue. Mm-hmm. But it will it will open the avenue easier. That's cool. Um, and then, like, microdosing, like, I, I've played with it, and, I mean, I bet I've, I've experimented with doing, like, probably 30 days in a row of microdosing. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, it's such a small dose. It's it, it's not noticeable, I guess is the best way I can say, but you know something's running in the operating system. Gotcha. Um, and it's... <sighs> you, you take any nootropics or anything like that? A little bit, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's it works the way you wish those did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like there's part of you that takes one of those and you want it to be that pill that it's like, pew, and you see everything better and your brain's faster and I can solve. It does that. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> it, it, it is that. Right. 
So it is what it is what it, what you hope for these things, right? It, dude, and and yeah, not only that, it's pain relief. Oh wow. I get big time out of it. No kidding. Um in fact, uh, even more so like on a more aggressive dose. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> There's no pain at all. And not only there's no pain, like, you're, you're not drunk. And I think I think that's a big misconception with psychedelics or mind-altering things, whether alcohol or anything else, is most people have only ever been drunk. And so they assume that that level of out-of-control is the level of out-of-control that comes from anything else. Right. And, I mean, you can be on a full-on other planet, uh, psychedelics-wise, and I can concentrate enough to say, oh, hey, man, or or walk somewhere. Like, you'll think you can't, but you're fine. Yeah, like, okay. you won't wobble. You're not fucked up. I mean, I wouldn't drive anywhere because I'm not an idiot. Yeah. But so a lot of that time now for me, like, if I'm too beat up and feel kind of shit, like, maybe it's time for, like, a long Saturday of heavier dose and kind of hang out down here. And take recovery day, right? Right. But it's like I get a vacation from being in this machine. Hmm. <clears throat> Is it? <sighs> and yeah, you, gratitude ever, and empathy go through the roof. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's great. Is it like, so it's almost like meditating, but it's yes. on something. Um, And then even with that, like with meditation and then perception of things, like your brain, like for me, like, I'll end up writing. I'm like, God damn, Ollie. You're a disaster, son. Get out of here, girl. <laughs> um, <laughs> Tell me. Oh, fucking ring-tailed idiot. Oh. <laughs> yeah, like, so even perception. Like, I'll end up writing a lot mm-hmm. and, like, come to a couple different, like, oh. So, one for me that happened was uh, with ayahuasca. Um, we were we were in Costa Rica. And I really, I think overall for that trip, like, I got a very mild mild experience i didn't get a ton of visual stuff was more internal um but sorted through some shit uh two of the nights i got nothing um and the third night that it actually popped was it didn't fire off for me until we started seeing fireworks at new year's okay so like my first moment of 2020 was boop (laughs) okay (laughs) and so uh you know, worked through some some bits that I needed to figure out about my my divorce. I worked through the end of my sport. I worked through these type of things, and then the one I didn't expect was I got this conversation from uh, my hip and knee. Mm. Um, like literally straight up talking to your hips. Oh and yeah, knee. they started it, and so like um, just get this. You know, you know who it is, right? But it's an audible voice you're 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 conversing with. Okay, and. Uh, they essentially had been like, hey, man, like, it's like everything going good for you in your life, whether that's your your business or, or relationship or any of these things have kind of stemmed from your experience with competing. So the work we did and and we're done, like you, you found our limit <laughs> and you, you went past it. Yeah. And so we've we've died on our shield for this pursuit what else is it you'd like from us? And we we don't have anything else to give. So how about some fucking respect for where we've gotten? And dude, from that moment, it was this very clear feeling of like, you're right. Like, I'm not just going to hammer you back into competing with me and being on board again. Like you're altered, you're done. And I need to shift gears on how I think about this and maybe treat you the way that I would like you to heal instead of I'm going to keep squatting and eventually depth and everything will change. (laughs) And being able to just make that realization and give it a break and just being like, okay, you're right. Everything I have going well is work that you've done. And and thank you. I'm going to be nice. Man, that's a great realization. It's interesting that you found it on that, right? You know, because it is. It's so hard for any athlete that has been a competitive sport to give it up. Like, <clears throat> I used to be the guy who would be like, why did these athletes, when I was younger, when everything was 
black and white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When everything was black and white, why do these old ass athletes try to continue to play these sports when they're past their prime? And then you get there because they love it. And you're right. You're like, and you like, and you've sunk your heart and soul into these. Whatever it is that you're doing, you, whether it's a frivolous be, pursuit exactly, at the end of the day, right? right? Like a fucking what, game, a game, or whatever, it, whatever it is, and and then exactly, and then all of a sudden you realize, you know, you you come to that realization that you're no longer where you're going, where you want to be, and you have to accept it, and um, and exactly, and the body's gonna start shutting down on you in, in certain pieces, right? And it's gonna be that was the hardest, a, a pretty hard thing for me to start to realize is like fuck my knee you know it's just like yeah it will never be the same knee it's never gonna be okay that will that was was once right nope. I, I look at uh or my elbow like i just can't get this <laughs> stupid fucking thing to go straight you know i'm like i just want sometimes i just want to turn it over and fucking you know take with a hammer, hammer. Like, dude i've definitely had those days with my knee straight. of like i could fucking lock this thing out if i really wanted <laughs> yeah, to <right. laughs> um but man what a like you know an experience that you got to have that you Legitimately, like sat and had a conversation yeah. with those body parts because of this, what we call a drug, um, well, chemical come, reaction. Yeah, chemical reaction. They, they come to this realization, and uh, you know, it probably put you at peace a lot. It it helped, man. It it let go of a lot of things. I didn't realize that that's where I was with it. Right. Um. I'm like, man. I I didn't realize the other day. And and or until the other day on this one, it was you know thinking about my hip, and it was was uh was was talking with my Cairo about it, and essentially uh you know very very clear it clicked that I'm like okay, so this isn't soft tissue I'm gonna work through and get range of motion back. Right. And so he's like, no, you know, he's like, look, I don't think you need hip replacement yet. I mean, we can go in and we can clean up clean up the arthritis, and we can we'll help things out. Yeah. And at that moment, like. Dude, I'm scared of surgery. Yeah. I didn't, and it, that never clicked for me because I'm good at having surgery. I had a fucking lot of them. <laughs> Nine of them. Right? <laughs> that's, a, and so, that's a lot. But, man, my right knee was supposed to be an ACL. Yeah. At the end of 2016, it was supposed to be a, an ACL. That's crazy. Right? The most common surgery ever. Like, we're good at them. Everyone does it now. And I just, it's not my doctor's fault. I didn't have a bad doctor. I didn't have a bad surgeon. I didn't. This was an elective surgery that I made an educated decision on trying to do. Right. So these are the consequences. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't fucking work out. And it's not good luck. It's not bad luck. The universe doesn't care. No. And at some point, my career competing in the Highland Games or, or whatever it was, was going to come to a close. Yep. Right? Honestly, this probably did me better. Then continuing to get worse at it slowly and not understanding why. Yeah. But but I would because and you know what it fucking is. You still get those moments that it all clicks and oh, you're like, yeah. it's there, it's I fucking there. I can find it. <laughs> yeah. If I just do this and this and this, <laughs> you do it for one day, and then the next day you're like, you can't walk. Fuck, I'm fine for three days. I'm I'm still running through this right now. It's okay. Yeah. yeah and I still have those moments, dude. And and it's. Yeah, it was it was a very very strange strange thing, and and probably went the best way it could for me. But man, that realization of like, yo, I I don't know if I'm okay with going in to do a small hip cleanup, right? Because I, the devil I currently know of how my hip feels, <laughs> yeah, isn't worth. I I don't think I can go back to where where it was. Like if my hip gets in as bad a shape as my knee did, like I don't know that I can survive that dark again. Yeah. And it's, I'm not it's, ready. <laughs> it's something that a lot of people just don't get, right? No. They don't get that, you know, not only are you in pain physically, but f the fucking mental drag Dude. and drain that it has on you daily. And I'm not saying it's the toughest thing in the world, but for an athlete coming from that world where something is, um, you just, you think you, because everything else, right? You've been injured as a, as an athlete. You you go out, you go through your career, and you get these little nagging injuries that come and go. Right. And then that injury comes, and it doesn't go. It just doesn't and go. It never goes. And one day it'll be good, and the next day it'll be shit. So, where I ended up making a pretty big connection that gave you know a ton of empathy was, as, as I've never really dealt with long term depression, that that's that's what this has to be like. Is this this constant thing? There's good days and bad days, but it's never not there. 
you know, you still have moments where you laugh and have a good time with your friends. But so much of with like that pain was, dude, everything was this deposits and credit in an account. And like, I was aware that there were X number of steps I get to take today. Now, I don't know what number that is, but there's a point where there's too many. Yeah. Or I did too much. And now that cost me a week. Yeah. And that got old. Yeah. It got old. Like, I can't go up and down stairs. Like, having that physical ability taken from me of, of a guy who, like, this fucking thing does whatever I want it to do. <laughs> right. Like, I could still do a standing backflip at 300 pounds when I was <laughs> moving. Like, this does whatever I want. Right. And it doesn't anymore. Nope. It doesn't. Pre- and <sighs> if I look at why I, why I went into pursuing strength, it's because I was curious to figure out what I can do. Right. Like I want to figure out what I'm capable of, what, what this can do, what can I push myself to be capable of? I can't be mad that I found out. It's true. That was the goal. (laughs) Right. You, you actually did what you wanted to do. Yeah. It's not an infinite linear path the way like father time wins and the mileage wins. And maybe, maybe as an athlete, right, we're all not, we all can't accept that. Right. Because in the end. The way we think as athletes is the fact that there's this never-ending, you know, I always remember reading athletes say, you know, the moment you know everything, you should retire. The moment you think you've accomplished everything, you should retire, right? And so for me, I've always been like, I'm never going to be satisfied. Right. Will I be happy with some of the aspects I get to in my life? But I'm never going to be satisfied. I'm always going to be want to be getting better. And But what, what you just said is, right, we came into this sport or this activity that we found wanting to push and find the limitations and when you find it it's a shitty feeling well but, but that was the goal right exactly but that's i mean that's, but uh, that's i'm sorry I'm, that's that I'm, it doesn't match the expectations right, that you exactly. made up out of fucking the ether <laughs> <but> <laughs> that's what i'm saying is like we have our expectations are are endless yeah and so that's where the struggle comes from and i think it's you know it's just it's just a crazy it's a crazy thing because when you're young and like you just said when you're 300 pounds doing backflips there <laughs> are there are no limitations no it's, you know look and even even still like I realize like I'm beat up and I don't move great like I can't fucking squat parallel uh, hey man I've seen your squats you, <laughs> you squat fucking great, it's great. don't you ever <laughs> say, let's say it's not yeah it's a it's a something I should do a seminar on. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, I still see like Kelly Starrett will sit comfortably, just ass on the ground, and I'm like, "Fucking noodle, yeah, goddamn right. freak." I know. But like, we were at a thing in Colorado, and like, I don't lift terribly heavy anymore. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that we got thrown into is this little competition. It was like a someone on your team has to come up with the best weightlifting total they can in seven minutes. <laughs> and so, because it was a group of powerlifters, and I'm the only person who's ever done any of those movements i got nominated like i'm the dude the dude with the fake knee who can't bend <laughs> the 37 year old <laughs> fake knee guy he's our olympic lifter Get him up there dudes i still i muscle snatched oh, an I, ugly I 120 it. kilos i saw it and then i fucking i still clean and push pressed 100 150 kilos i'm like fuck oh. it we're okay <laughs> <laughs> i'm okay with this no it, i felt like shit for, <laughs> for five days <laughs> yeah, afterwards right. But, like, that's still there. Hey, man. And, of course, it is. Exactly. Because those deposits have been made for a long fucking time. They don't just go away. No. Now, what I love about switching over to something like cycling is that I'm, I'm interested now to pick sports and things I'm fucking bad at. Right. And, and stuff that's less physically demanding, as far as intensity-wise. You, you were... You look just like a cyclist. Yes. <laughs> Dude, like, honestly, that's one of the reasons I've picked it. A, I do like cycling. Yeah. And it also appeals to the I, rest I, of my bullshit of, like, tell. you mean you mean there's things to buy that are expensive? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Fucking perfect. I love it. <laughs> yeah, this is a great hobby for me. Um, things to tinker with and, like, yeah. you know, a variety of, of disciplines and toys. And, like, I'm a gear whore all the way through. Well, I was as a lifter, and I am. Yeah. <laughs> I am is this. And so... uh you know, trying to not let it turn into much of an arms race with I'll, I'll buy the next fastest <laughs> thing instead of get better at it. Right. Um, but at the same time, like, it's, I'm even enjoying climbing on a bike, mm-hmm. 
because it's high reward, low risk. Yeah. You're not going to fall at that speed and get in any trouble. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't matter. matter at all. Whereas the mountain bike can still get squirrely. Yeah. Again, you know? I, I I like both too. I like I love road biking, but man, mountain biking is uh, oh yeah, it can get it's a roller coaster that you get to control. <laughs> it can get gnarly. Man, a big one for me. So I've taken a handful of like pretty decent crashes in the last probably six months. Yeah, mentally that's been really good because I felt like I was in a bike crash, right? Not. That I'm so stiff and fragile that I was going to ragdoll and fall apart. <laughs> right. Of like, hey, riding's pretty cool, but I cannot afford to crash. <laughs> like, yeah. having some confidence that, like, okay, I'll survive. Right. Like, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah, going up there with uh, every part of your body already stiff. <sighs> yeah. No, and yeah. then, like, I'll never be good at this. Ah. My skeleton's too big. You'll be good. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll be better than I've been now. All you got to do is be better than you are. Right, that, we'll... and that's for me. But, like, as far as, like, I'll never be good enough to, like, dust my local group. Right. And then decide, like, well, I should go find who who's next in, <laughs> like, the area and, like, go find a race and then do well. And then that switch in my brain can switch, like, this is our thing. We're now going to focus. <laughs> right. There is a 0% chance I become best in the world on a bike at anything. <laughs> Same as the NBA. If I want to take up shooting basketball, it's probably yeah. okay. <laughs> probably going to be all right. <laughs> right. I probably won't go try. I'm probably going to not try to go pro. And so, yeah, I can just enjoy, like now, especially as, like my style of athletics have always been so power-based, whether it was throwing. And so it's, there's no time for me to think about what's happening while I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. Like it, even, even during a CrossFit workout, you have moments to think. There's a, few There's a lot of it yeah. that the, the body's too busy and the brain can just be like, what are we doing? Right. Um, throwing, it's, it's a second. Right. And then I'm given a number as feedback to decide how well that went. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whereas like cycling, there's plenty of moments while I'm doing it. I'm like, this isn't going great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I'm not anywhere near my path. Where did they go? This, this isn't ideal. Yeah. And, and cycling by yourself is even harder. Yeah. Because when you're in a group, man, you can move. You can move. I love cycling. It's fun. Yeah. And then, like, now realizing that the victory is just like, well, just don't stop. Yeah. Like, all you got to do is get to the end of it and not die and you won. Right. Yeah. That's all you got to do. It's, it's, so, it's cool. Yeah. I want to do more bikepacking and more adventure stuff. That would be awesome. You know, stuff that, stuff that man, that stuff's been really cool. Like, we did those six days through, uh, we rode the uh, Hayduke Trail through utah so it was like 220 miles over five days oh wow and um so you, what were you riding on i rode that on my old mountain bike so okay. it's essentially like that one yep. but it's mostly fire road oh, the okay. whole the whole thing um but beautiful yeah but we camp every night and dude, utah uh, is one of the most beautiful states dude there's a pretty good chance i end up there it's a beautiful place i um i had i just drove from san diego to st louis and i drove like <laughs> i'm driving through eastern utah and i'm like how are more people not here? <laughs> right. You know, like this place. It's super be cool. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. That whole side of our country, man. I think between there, like, I like Coeur d'Alene. Idaho mm. is super, oh, super sick gosh. and affordable. I've never been there, but it's I, have, so rad. I have a buddy who has a place there and he's just, uh, all he talks about is yep. how amazing it is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's lovely. They also only get like 40 inches of snow and you're five hours from Banff National Park in Canada. So, like, all right. And I, and I have a good airport in Spokane 45 minutes from me. Like, this right. is great. <laughs> What's not, a, not the love? That's not a bad plot spot. Yeah, and it, it isn't. It's not California expensive. It's worse than here, but it isn't. You're in St. Louis, man. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> this is like the cheapest place well, to live. Well, I lived in the Baton Rouge prior to this. So oh, like, right. My right. whole life experience is like, you pay what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what? When you told me what you paid for this place. Yeah, I of was, course. I was actually kind of shocked. I yeah. thought that seemed high. But even the Missouri market. Well, so the... the the people who bought it when it was burned out, yeah, they paid fifty for it, right? But then they put some work into it. It's really put nice. a lot of work. Really nice. Yeah, it's turned out good. It'll be a good, <clears throat> be a good investment property either way. Just yeah. where we're located, you know, one street off of Manchester, with that growing and blowing up, a ton of cash is still getting dumped into that road. Yeah. So. But yeah, I, back to the 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 sporting man. So I'm doing boxing. Okay. So. Like, that how is, serious are you that, pursuing that? <laughs> That's just a terrible question. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, no. That just, I mean, I want to get in a fight. Okay. Not a fight, not a, not a street fight. No, I want no, to I, I want to box is what I mean. I just love it. I don't, I don't know what it is. I, I've always wanted to learn how to do boxing. Um, 
And so now, like, I, you know, I'm doing it, and I'm just, in, I'm, I love it. But I haven't gotten hit in the face yet. Mm, and so that's the that's thing. That's a different turning right? point, right? right? That's, that's going to be the, the deciding factor. And so I want to do it. I want to spar. Um, I, mean, I, I would imagine as someone who's seen combat that you're, Probably gonna handle a punch <laughs> to the face, okay? Yeah, it won't be too big of a shock of like Jesus Christ. I don't want any part I of mean, this. Yeah, and, I, and and wrestling, you know, you yeah, you, you had there's headbutts that happen and things, and it's physical. But um, I just I love combat sports in general. Yeah. I I really wish I could get into jujitsu. I'm just so with the knee. You feel the same way I do about it. So I did it for like six months prior to one of my surgeries, mm-hmm. and I really really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, I'd like to pursue it again, but I think the only way it's going to be smart is like I've got to do private. Right. I, I need to yeah. find a good black belt in town. Yeah. Who will and actually pay? Teach, yeah. Teach you and not beat you up. Yeah. Right? Like ideally, I would train with uh, like my buddy Kyle Kingsbury, who's down in Austin. Oh, right. You know, the former UFC guy is a black belt in jujitsu, and like, there's never a point where I'm a threat. <laughs> <laughs> right. Of any sort. And he's not going to hurt you. No. You know, he, that, he can let me learn. That's actually what the, the you know the, the boxing gym I go to. They're like, you know, if we spar, we're gonna have you spar with someone really good because you're not just going to tee off on each other, and right. he's and he's not gonna just knock you out. Well, that was like I uh, one of my buddies, uh, a guy um, out west, uh, Jason Ellis, runs a radio show and does does some boxing and MMA stuff, and so he um, was going to train one day, and I was uh, had gone to meet him to go catch the conditioning portion of it and then he was going to spar mm-hmm. he's like you box and i'm like no i don't and he's like he's like well never mind then <laughs> and i'm like no and i was like he's like you're too big <laughs> he might knock somebody out well he, he he just basically was saying like was wondering if i was interested in sparring with him right and he's boxed a lot mm-hmm. um so like he's he can handle the throttle control yeah and he's like you're too big that if you get dumb right I have to hurt you. Yeah. And I'm like, I understand. I prefer <laughs> that to not go that way. I don't think you want to do that. <laughs> right. And those boxers, man, like they, I don't think they get enough, cr- well, that's not true. They get credit, but. Uh, they get paid for shit. Man, they get, yeah, they do get paid. I don't understand where all that money comes from. No one's watching boxing. Like, <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> right. I know. Yet there's still $100 million fucking paychecks. Where, Dude, it's cr- beca- I think do they just have a press in the back? I think it's just something about, you know, fighting. Yeah. Right, that people like to watch, or it's simple black and white, dude. Yeah. You know who wins and loses. <laughs> it's right there, man. It's simple. Yeah. Um, and so it's interesting, but I, yeah, I, uh, I just lost my train. Of well, so like with with everything going down right now, I mean, there's celebrity boxing. So Hap Thor yeah. and Eddie Hall. I know. I saw that. Like, have what? this thing going. Uh, <laughs> That's gonna be a mess. I'm gonna go. Oh man, I. It's gonna be in Vegas next year. We're gonna fucking go. I have to go see this thing. Yeah. That, that will be really fun to watch. I want to see Half. I've known Half Thor a long time. I'll, yeah. I'll root for him. Yeah. Um, good dude. He's yeah. always been awesome. And so, I I think three minute rounds are a mistake. I don't know if they'll make it. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> you know, like... I don't care what level of conditioning they try to get into. Right. Like Half, he's down a lot of weight, but he's still three hundred and seventy pounds. Yeah. He's down eighty pounds. Can you imagine? No. Getting hit. <laughs> No. By that hand, no matter, I don't care how big you are. No, dude. Like, that's why That's why people were so intrigued with the heavyweight champions, right, in the 90s and early 2000s, right, when you had Lennox Lewis, Hollyfield, yeah. uh, Tyson, all these guys. You had these monstrous men going in and just teeing off on each other. I mean, it's like, it's sad that the UFC, the heavyweight, really isn't the best division because there's so many great divisions throughout. Yep. But, man, like... Your 205 dudes are terrifying. Yes. When they start hitting each Yikes. other... When they become street fights in the cage at UFC, you're just like, someone's going to die. Or like a Francis Ngannou or, or oh someone like that. Gosh. Just like what a... Or like Yolo Romero. Yeah. Stay, stay as far away from that monster <laughs> as you possibly can. He's <laughs> like, oh, this is why concealed carry exists. <laughs> fuck having an altercation with that guy. I'm going to apologize as long as I can. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. It's so much fun to watch. Oh, um, right. And and it. with, you know, like like half a year. Like, so, I mean, if you got offered, a you know, a year now to train for boxing yeah. for a celebrity fight, give I, or go. I'd do it. I'd do it right now. I would. <laughs> Who's I, who's the who's the other CrossFit equivalent that that they sign up for you? I would I don't know we've uh, you know it has I, to be Dan Bay it has to be Dan. Da- yeah, he's a little bit he- yeah. He, I mean he's not my he's about my size. Um, he's a little maybe a little bit. He's, I think he's ten or fifteen pounds heavier than me. 
Let's make it happen. We can do it here in the basement. We'll I'm live in. stream it out. I'm in, man. I'm in. I told Castro. I said, Castro. <laughs> I go, because he, I've seen, uh, back in the day, he posted about uh, Spar, or he was learning boxing. Sure. And I was like, hey, I'm yeah, I'm learning boxing. I'm like, let's spar. And he's like, I'm like, you got the reach, but if I get inside, I'm going to knock you out. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, dude! I, I I saw something from uh Conor McGregor the other day talking about Floyd and that fight and everything, and he's like, "I'm still mad. I never swung a kick up there just to remind him." Oh <laughs> my god! But that that would he wouldn't have got his. Oh, money. it would have been fucked. Yeah, right? he wouldn't have got his but money. That was before he had a billion dollar whiskey company. Right. Exactly. Probably doesn't need it. Probably, doesn't, probably not too big of a deal. He's doing just fine. He doesn't need to fight anymore. <laughs> He'll be all right. But he's uh, gonna fight Pacquiao. Yeah, why not? Pac- like, fuck not. Like, like Pacquiao. Those like Pacquiao was my. That was my. That key. could be ugly because Pacquiao's an aggressive fighter. He is. He's quick. Whereas he's, where Floyd Mayweather is a defensive defensive fighter. dude, right? Right. And so that was something I thought about. Man, is like, it's it's easy to look at Floyd and be like, that's a fucking boring fight. Especially yeah. like him and Manny were a boring fight. Well, all his fights were boring. Do you know how much skill it takes to not get hit by Manny Pacquiao? It's the, hard, it's the hardest thing to do. <laughs> Hardest thing to do, right? To get in the ring with Manny Pacquiao and not get punched, right? He's a killer. That dude throws his fat. His that's what he. All of his opponents would say is, "I never saw a punch." Like they were no. so he's so fast. I would say something to him, and and he would hit me thirty times before <laughs> right. I realized what was happening. It'd be that like, like <laughs> Chris, uh, like in in Russia, oh. like <laughs> <laughs> fuck just happened. <laughs> which one? Of, which one of you fucking guys kick me? <laughs> which one of you guys kick me? <laughs> dude, it would very much be that. Uh, yeah, like, I mean, good on Connor. Yeah, he's he's making he's it. He's smart, man. He's a he's smart guy. I just wish he would have buzzed the tower. Just just swing a kick up there. Just pass it in front of the, his face <laughs> and kind of give him a wink and like, hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> just remember. All right. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. But speaking of that, Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. Oh my gosh, I'm so fucking excited, dude. Back to like what you were saying, like these athletes that you know keep keep doing and not letting it go. And I'm still paying to watch it, I dude. Don't care. You can't look at Tyson's recent training videos and think that this is an inept fifty five, you know, fifty four year old right. who's not capable of handling himself. I he's am, terrifying. I am so excited, and I hope. And I Roy Jones Jr. is, is one it, of the, is, is terrifying. Is as one well. of the greatest boxes of all, of all time. time. I was actually shocked that that's who you know each what. Jones can't be that old. What they're like? they're both fifty. Oh, he is in his fifties. Yeah, they're okay. both in their fifties. Now, I thought they fought different weight classes. Jones, but Tyson's a, a small heavyweight. Yeah, Jones came up at the end of his career because I thought the same thing. Okay, because I was like, I thought Jones like, where was they more fighting? of uh, yeah, I thought he was like a welterweight, right, or whatever, or whatever. Though I, I, I guess he's light heavy, huh? Yeah, he was. Okay, yeah, he, so he came up at the end of his career and he fought. Up, Maybe up he's there. taller than I thought he is. Yeah, I bet he's well. Tyson's only what five eleven. Yeah, he's right. He's right around six foot. Yeah, I don't know what Jones is. I bet he's up there. I mean, the thing is, it's like Linus Lewis and those guys are monsters. Yeah, they're all six 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 seven. And it's a great stylistic matchup because Tyson is an aggressor, <sighs> right? He's going to come at him, and Jones is a is a defensive fighter. Yep. He's a counter puncher, and so man, it's going to be fun. And neither one of them want to walk out with that W that no. that L. I don't care what anybody says. Two of the best dudes on earth exactly. at a thing still right. want to be considered <laughs> the best dude on earth. <laughs> they want to still establish dominance, right? It doesn't matter. Dude, Ali, Ali is somewhere in another realm saying, fuck these guys. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Just give me, a, give me a shot. Give me a shot. I'll take this. Dude, man, I know. I'm, and, I'm man, that. still, it, like, I love Ali stuff and, like, what, a, what an amazing fighter plus promoter. Just, But as far as terrifying... Tyson? Terrifying. Yikes. Ter- like, he was the most, he was the scariest man on the planet for a long time. For a long time. A long time. That, I loved watching Tyson fight. Well, you can still, like, still just watching, like, a Tyson highlight video, it's uh, like, Jesus Christ, guys. Yeah. <laughs> the way and how quick and fast he was. That they're betting whether or not the national anthem takes longer than the fight. Oh, gosh, yeah. Those fights, yeah, they were always, like, first-round knockouts. Like, terrifying. Actually, yeah, terrifying. Yeah, I remember watching. I remember watching when he bit Holyfield's ear. <sighs> I was yeah, I remember watching it. Too. I was in an Outback, like a <laughs> steak Outback Steakhouse. I was in an Applebee's. <laughs> I was in an Applebee's. <laughs> oh, uh, we're just middle class fancy in it, yeah, right? Yeah, off. Right, <laughs> exactly. Probably here in St. Charles. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah, fucking what an animal. Yeah, I'm excited for that. When that when that was announced, I was like, 
I, I didn't believe it at first. Like, You're this right. Is, this is gonna this be, seems stupid. Yeah, this is going to be – this isn't right. And then he exactly starts putting out these training videos, and he's actually training for Have it. Have you listened to his uh, Rogan yeah, interviews? the recent one. Did you hear the, the previous one that was done? It was done, like, in 2019, like, early in 2019. Mm-hmm. It's, like, the first time he had gone on the show. Okay. And he's deep into the weed business, and he's – not interested in fighting and he keeps mentioning he's like yeah and like because joe's like man do you ever think about like coaching or doing clinics or or you know boxing to stay in shape and he's like i I can't i can't turn that ego back on right like it's not cool yeah like i'm not all right once that fire's going right and the second time he's on that fire is lit oh man it was that i i read i I listened to it on the drive out yeah oh my gosh i'm excited did you ever have you ever listened to his uh, hot boxing? I haven't. I want to. So he's got a co-host. That, like my original thought was like him as a host by himself isn't great, but there's another guy yep. helping yeah. steer the ship. Mm-hmm. Yep. And there's uh, the the one I really I listened to the Evander Holyfield one just because I was really interested to see. Fuck, how- they had him on. Yeah. Evander's a very interesting guy. He was a good Rogan interview. Yeah. Okay. I didn't listen to this Rogan one, uh, but he but the one with Sugar Ray Leonard. Yep. Was by far. Like, there's a point in there, and he talks about um, it's it's like a three-minute where Tyson goes deep, and it gets, it like, it got me, like, going, like, emotionally, and, yeah. like, like just, like, sp- oh, gosh. It was awesome. Man, there's, there's a handful of times you'll catch something from a guy like that, and, like, <sighs> dude, we got to have those people, those... Like, Tyson's such an outlier of outliers. Yeah. That we we just don't have many of those guys. Like, he was never going to conform. He was never going <laughs> to fit in and have a fucking real job. Nope. Or, or any of these type of things. And then to think that, like, found Custom Auto or Custom Auto summoned him. Right, yeah. You know? Right, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, like, the luck of... Being there at the right time in history to meet that guy, to yeah, it's it's one thing to find someone with talent. It's another thing to find someone who wants to work hard. Right. And then you line it up at the right time, and you get to see that in a few athletes like LeBron James. Like, holy fuck, he's got it. Yeah. He's got a thing that just... Like you show up out of high school and you're competitive in the NBA. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like how boring was high school basketball? <laughs> just, yeah, right. just playing techno ball football with Bo Jackson? <laughs> like nice. just do whatever you want. <laughs> that is the perfect, the perfect analogy. Fucking Bo Jackson's another. Yeah. Bo like, ja- oh, Bo Jackson, Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods. And yo, if I mean all those guys. I, you know, talk about the you know end of career in sports and and bitterness or whatever that comes from it, and like. Look, if Bo Jackson's not mad and he's okay, yeah, I'm probably should be able to sort my shit out. <laughs> right, that dude should be a Hall of Famer in two sports, and he, you know, he's not a Hall of Famer in all, either of them. No, what oh, an Bo incredible! Jackson. He was my favorite. Uh, everyone's, yeah, everyone's. No, just mine. <laughs> <laughs> I picked him first. I, I he first. was the first draft team. He's on my wall. <laughs> he's on my wall. My garage. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, yeah, and God, guys like that, dude. Yeah, he's just got. People, people that have it. There was a cool story. Um, and this is just a just a random story from. Uh, so the first time I went to Nike, and this is probably how they they probably do this to a lot of athletes. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. You know, they know the game. Yeah, exactly. They, but they literally made Bridges nose shirts, My and they brought yeah. and it was in the Bo Jackson, and I was like, and like, because this was the first first time they were getting into like all of fitness yeah. be- since. Like the Bo Jackson time, right? Because that Bo Jackson shoe was like a fitness shoe because Bo knows all. Right. <clears throat> they did. They made these shirts, Bridges nose, and like I was what? Like, I was like, yeah, where do I? Where do I sign? This is fine. <laughs> where, do I, where, where do I sign? I love it. Like Trying my, to play it cool. Like my kids still have the sh- like they they even make kid shirts for oh, my kids man. and stuff. And I was like, I literally I was like I don't even know what to say right now. Yeah. And then you're just like hooked. <laughs> you think about what a monster something like Nike is. Yeah. Yo. It's so. Did you ever work with Reebok, or, or was it? I was with Reebok for um, just one, no, three years. I okay. Had a three, I did a three, yeah, the first, because Nike wasn't even, like, no. in the picture. Yeah, until the time. Metcon came out, and then yeah. they were still not even allowed <clears throat> to be at the games. So, no, we were, like, that. Like they, the Nike guys signed me. I signed with Nike before there was a Metcon. Yo. They handed me a shoe, and they were like, what would you change about this? 
And like that, I actually like, you know. Blue. Had, had, yeah, <laughs> I'd make it red. <laughs> Everyone knows that's faster. Good to go, right? All right, what else, is, what else do we need? But like I got to be part of the, uh, you know, the first shoe. I had the first Metcon worn in competition. They oh, actually, nice. I had to give it back to them and they uh, put it in their vault or whatever it's called. That's and, pretty sick. Um, so yeah, I had some really cool moments with that, and I'm not like, not trying to brag. It was just that we talked about. No, but it's look, it's 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 unique yeah. experience. Yeah, it was. It was really cool. I got to go down into their lab where they put you know the little. Oh, all the, the mocap, the little bulbs all over you, and they like we went through movements with like five different shoes on and stuff, and like pressure plates on the ground and everything. It was, um, I got the chat with Phil Knight. Like it was, Yo. it was really crazy. It was a crazy fucking Phil Knight. Yeah, dude, I, I got a bit like before one of my regionals. Like he literally sent me a video saying like. Here we go, Josh. Just do it. <laughs> I was like, what? I was like, this isn't real life. It's weird that you said just do it and it's not cheesy because that's your thing. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Fuck. I know. Man. Dude, how about nailing branding so good that we just don't have to ever change it? Ever. We'll just use the swoosh. We don't have to update it. No. It looks like this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's fine forever. Uh, All right. <laughs> it was crazy. That, that was a crazy, crazy experience. I'll tell you that. Yeah, it's like it's like Coca Cola. It's like they're never gonna try not red. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, monsters at that level, man. Like fuck. Yeah. And like they're so big, they're not concerned about Under Armour, who's another gigantic right. thing. Yeah. And yeah, I can't I can't even imagine headaches that come from. I always like I always try to wrap my head around now that we're you know in the business world as well, <sighs> you know. I try to wrap my head around a business like that. Amazon, or tr- and trying to like understand even a little bit of what goes into that nope. is mind blowing. So many moving I'm like, pieces. Where's the where are the barbells and pull up bars? At? Right, <laughs> and, and, and <laughs> what it is here. that I that that again, it's you know, looking at it from that perspective and realizing why they're so far ahead. Um, like even so, I went on a, a tour at Specialized pretty recently. Okay, and it was super super cool. And of course, it's like, oh. It's because right now they're finishing up everything for 2022. Right. Yeah. You know, and so, man, what do, like, I know for me with apparel and like right now I've got it paced where I know everything we're releasing until the end of January. Mm -hmm. We have most of it done waiting to go. Yeah. And so like, I'm trying to keep that level of a quarter out. Right. Um, The problem that comes with that is by the time we drop it, I'm so fucking tired of looking at it <laughs> yeah. that I don't care about it anymore because I thought about it eight months ago. Yeah. And so imagine being two years of looking at a shoe and releasing like, you don't know if it's going to do well anymore. You have no fucking thoughts on it of like, <clears throat> I don't, I don't know if it's good anymore at all. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, then you're, because you're also, not only are you done with that shoe, you're working on the next two shoes. Yeah. You're. Yeah, by the like time that, you've seen this and think we're innovative, like, you don't know what's coming. Dude, I mean, yeah, exa- I mean, that was with Nike, was when you were looking at shoes, you'd be looking at, sh- they'd be like, they'd always have a, an actual an actual shoe for next year's shoe to hand you, <sighs> like a like a prototype. Yeah. And then they were like, and now, you know, they'd pull out this one shoe and they'd be like, this is two years out, this is a very basic, like, what, and they'd always ask, like, yeah, what, what do you think? What do you want? Yeah. And I always said rocket boots. Rocket always, boots. <laughs> always, every time. I want rocket boots. Yeah. I want them to go in the air and in the water. <laughs> Dude, uh, I think about, like, with like with that push, like, like stuff we're seeing from Elon Musk. Oh, like, man. that Neuralink thing. Hyper, or Hyperlink? Or well, the Hyperloop is the Hyper- transportation. Yeah. Neuralink is the implant he's talking about oh, for the right, brain. Right, right, right. Which is, I think it's very easy to get like, what are we doing? Yeah. But, well, and the way he's explained it is, like, it's this. Yeah. That's all, that's all the Neuralink is. It's mm-hmm. it is this, in a more efficient manner. Mm-hmm. It's right now our interface <laughs> is very slow right. with the information that we have. Mm-hmm. So imagine if there was a way just to pour the information in. And so like people were asking like, do you think you'll be able to record memories? And he's like, yeah, which we already do. Right. I have a ton of memories on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's <laughs> right. video and photos of it. <laughs> yeah. It'll just now be from this perspective. Wow. Like they'll, your eye gives an electrical impulse to your brain. They're going to have wires and those wires, you know, interpret electrical input to tell a machine to do a thing. Man. And so, 
I don't know. The, how, I don't know how I feel about that. Well, it's coming. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, all all it is is a better phone. Yeah. It's now a phone that doesn't take up one of your hands. You know, the the weirdness will be that we'll be able to text, but it'll just be talking instead. Hmm. Like you'll be able to we can communicate telepathically. Wow. Um, now I'm curious how the interface of that works. Like, do I, do I just sense the things you're telling me? Do I get an audible or do, does like a text pop up in my field of view? Right. Um, but when that happens, if we, <clears throat> and, and if that becomes a thing, we will see a drastic switch of the haves and have nots for people that can afford that technology and people who can't. Yeah. And that will be a big split because people who get it will stop communicating verbally. Man. Because why would you? That's crazy. I don't know how I feel about <laughs> it'll, that. It'll be archaic. <laughs> I don't think I like that. Yeah, look, I look, I don't think we're going to be great at it in the time span that I'm alive, but... Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Who, I never would have thought you uh, could do the things you could do on a phone right now. Yo. And like from 10 years, or 20, right. 15 years ago. Yeah, I mean, the well, technology increases exponentially, and that's... That's another one of those Elon things. Like he's, Elon is scared of AI. Yeah, I remember reading or watching him on Rogan. I, f- I feel like I feel like we should listen. Yeah, <laughs> right. Like yeah. what I what I prefer is not listening to the old crusty white dudes mm-hmm. in Congress who Elon tried to talk to about the fear of AI. Yeah, and they're like, we don't we don't see a problem. Like, of course you don't. Yeah. <laughs> That's why he's here. Right. He's here to explain the fucking problem. Is that once this thing can learn. Yeah. It learns at a speed that we don't, like, it doesn't make, like, we can't even talk about it. Right. It's like thinking about space for me, where I can't even contemplate to think I know any, like, what infinity is. Right. You know, like, it just keeps going. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. No, there's an end. There's all, there's obviously an end. But it's not. You know, yeah. like, that's what's, man, I don't know. Yeah. Look, and then not only take that, but then the one that compounds it for me is time. Right. You know, and then how is time interpreted to based on gravity? Mm. And so if you've got different gravitational pulls, time passed differently. And so, like, time's not consistent across across the, the big scale. It's nuts. Yeah. The whole thing is just, yeah. There's, I, 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 I reel myself back in <laughs> with the idea of, for the, tiny amount of time that I'm allowed to be alive <laughs> and the even smaller amount of the universe that I get to explore right there's still so much cool shit <laughs> <laughs> exactly like yeah like like Iceland's rad like yeah. like there's a bunch of really like great food and places and views and Yosemite National Park or the Grand Canyon or Glacier National Park or bam for fucking there's amazing things on our planet that can't even begin to scratch the surface of what the most amazing things must be. Uh, yeah. It's insane. It really is. It's, it's, it gives me like almost like anxiety to think about. You know, See, because you I, I've even... used it to turn it the other way. <laughs> like it, it gives me relief because yeah. it makes me go, oh, none of this matters. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's great. So just do what you want. <laughs> right. Just have a good time. Be nice to people. Like at the end of the day, like it's eh, true, though. we're gonna hit by a fucking meteor or something. It doesn't make any difference. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, we we had one like a month ago. They clo- yeah past the closest it's ever had. Eighteen hundred miles. That seems pretty close. That's way between us and the moon. Yeah, the fucking moon is still like a couple. Like, it's not a million miles out, but the moon's far. It's a couple hundred thousand miles. Okay. Um. And so, I mean, the idea that something the size of my truck passed between us and there, and we didn't know it was coming. Right. Um, I mean, yeah, a couple of years ago, right? Like, this is one of those things we haven't had happen. When there was one that blew up in Russia seven or eight years ago now, I can't remember what city, but it blew up very high up in the atmosphere, but the the explosion power-wise was the equivalent of... 50 atomic bombs really and so like all the way up Mm -hmm. in the mesosphere Mm -hmm. it still put like 3,000 people in the hospital because of shattered windows and everything and and stuff that broke wow and so and that thing was like 100 feet in diameter (laughs) an asteroid small 30 fucking yards yeah 
Like if that comes in steeper and hits ground in LA, we instantly have 10 million dead people. Oh, instantly. Gone. And like, like go to Crater National Park is that out in there. LA? Is 10 million? No, so that's about what would die if something that size hit one oh, spot. Gotcha. Um, you know, Malibu would probably be okay. Uh, <laughs> thank, probably, God, thank God. Probably have a bubble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank goodness. <laughs> thank God for that. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, man, like we're just flying rock through the universe around other flying rocks. Luckily, it's big as shit. It's crazy. There's not even anything close to us. Right. The moon. Yeah. And then it's Mars, which is six fucking months traveling at. 18,000 miles an hour to get there. It only takes, wait, no, I thought it took... Six months. I thought it took longer than that. I confirmed this last night. Bonnie's uh, okay. brother-in-law works with Boeing and NASA, so okay. I thought it was nine. I thought it was like two years. No, we're getting better. <clears throat> wow, that's crazy. The real problem with that is the first people we send, right? they're not coming back. They ain't coming back. No. So you better get that one-way ticket. You're a Martian. <laughs> right. <laughs> you, you now have a different passport. You live there. Yeah. Well, dude, let's let's take this in. We're we're right at two hours, so. Okay, brother. Yeah. Um, we, get, I, we got deep. We got yeah. we got deep into some crazy shit. I love it. Yeah. We didn't quite get into the the Pentagon releasing information that they have a <laughs> spaceship. They fucking said that this year. They released a fucking document saying that they have a craft of other world origin, and that's oh yeah all the information that came with them. Like, can we can we dive into that? that? That's a it. Bit? That's all you're gonna give. Okay, <laughs> thanks. All right. Oh, cool. Trump at least got Big Ten football back on the map. <laughs> we we got Big Ten football, boys. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so where can people uh, find all your things, and what's, what's your podcast? Uh, podcast is uh, Checking In, Josh Bridges Podcast. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, Bridges J3, Instagram, um, Josh Br- or josh-bridges.com, programming, and uh, Good Dudes Coffee. Yeah, since we're sharing it. Uh, yeah, you, I'm, yeah, um, yeah. Let's, let's hear yours, because it's coming Matt on Vincent. yours. Yeah, I what hate Matt I? Vincent on Instagram, um, hate brand goods, I'm so podcast. And uh, I have Habit Coffee. I love it. Competing brands. I know it. We'll never be friends. Because <laughs> only a couple people drink coffee, apparently. Right. Not that many <laughs> people. Second most traded fucking thing on earth. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it, didn't it pass oil? Oh, it may now. I thought it did. It's either that or tea. Tea may still be better than coffee. I think, yeah, you might be right. Yeah. Matcha tea is a good way to go as far as yeah. the business side of things. I'm still trying to work on getting getting tea. Matcha, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, always, that's where everything is. I love it, man. I always love having these conversations. It was fun, man. It's good times, brother. Yeah. Brother, I appreciate it, and always. I will uh, talk to you later. See you, man.